Let's show COVID-19 ba to? Joke lang. Shells shape. Shells shells shape. We're gonna be going at this at a snail's pace. We are done with this and this and this and this. And we are now left with gastropods. Classes of mollusks. Gastropods are unique because they exhibit torsion. Torsion is when the visceral mass of your gastropod, which is everything else except for the head and the foot, rotates about 90 to 180 degrees. And it repositions the mantle cavity, os radium, gills, unfortunately also the anus, to the side of the body or right on top of the head. You have an accident. It's just an unfortunate consequence, of course. Why would you want to put the mantle cavity on top of your head? Even if that means you got to put your ass on top of your head, too. For one, having the mantle cavity repositioned at the front allows the organism to retreat into the shell head first. And any self-respecting organism with a head would want to keep its head safe. If that thing gets cut off, you're dead. You have the gills and the osphradium, which is a chemosensory structure, also repositioned at the front, where it is more against the water current when the gastropod is moving head first. There's more efficient respiration, as well as chemosensing. Almost all gastropod shells exhibit coiling. Coiling and torsion are completely separate, independent events. For your typical gastropod shell, the two most important structures to remember are the apes, the apex and the aperture. If you know where those two are, you will be able to identify the chirality of the shell. Chirality, ano na naman yun? Whether or not it's right-handed, dextral, or left-handed, sinistral. Eh, ano naman? In the world of gastropods, it's difficult for them to mate if they have opposite chiralities. But for you, and in the context of this subject, chirality helps with specimen identity identification because there are a few groups of gastropods which are known to exhibit a particular type of chirality. And on that note, if you're making a report on gastropods, please do not make the mistake of flipping photos. You have the apex at the top and then the aperture at the bottom. Take the picture as it is, you know, as, as it is and do not flip the fucking photo. It might give the illusion that you have a sinistrally chiral shell when in fact the original is it's a dextrally chiral shell. In the world of gastropod identification, it matters. This is just to demonstrate the variety of gastropod shell forms and shapes. Konti pa nga lang yung nandyan. These are also very helpful in identifying gastropods because certain groups will almost always have a certain shell shape. The variety of the shapes that we see here can tell us so much about the lifestyle of the gastropod in question. Why do some shells have very long spires? Why do some have very thick aperture lips? Why do some have these other spines that are protruding? The radula. They come in different types, but it's in gastropods in particular that they also play a role in the identification of the species. Currently, this is how gastropods are broken up into their main clades. We kind of started out based on the position of their gills. You may have heard of the groups prosobranch, epistobranch, and pulmonate. Yun yung classification noon. With science, many studies come up, things change. We just want to make it harder for you guys. More stuff to memorize. <laughs> With this classification scheme, asan dyan sina prosobranchia, opistobranchia, at pulmonata? Ah. There are a few morphological characteristics that can help us differentiate among these groups. Again, we're just gonna stick with the features that we can observe with our own two eyes. These descriptions that we put up here for these different clades, these are not like hard and fast rules, because that's what biology is. Everything except, everything except. So masani na kayo na may ganon. It's a bit frustrating. We're trying to classify organisms this way, but then nature is like, well, fuck you, I don't care about that. It's also a reflection of how flexible nature is. From this point forward, we're just gonna have a rundown of the representatives that you have in the lab, and then maybe I'll just highlight a few representatives that deserve a bit of airtime. We can't talk about all of them because dami dami talaga nila. Kneecap shape or patella shape, kaya nga patellogastropoda. The shell shape is just cup shape, it does not coil. Where do you find these guys? Typically intertidal areas. And if you're in an area, again, with huge wave action, it makes more sense to have a low-profile shell. Meron silang laging inuuwian, and they kind of carve it out such that their shell is like a perfect fit. You can't easily pry it out and water cannot escape. If you live in an intertidal area, it's not just the wave action that's going to be a problem for you. It's also the fact that pag nag low tide, eh di walang tubig. And for them, they still have gills, so they kind of need the water for the gas exchange and respiration. Pag nag low tide, yung water na natira dun sa loob, it kind of just stays there and your mollusk stays nice and cozy and moist. If they're exploring the rocks, going around finding their food, how do they find their way back to the home base? They kind of secrete mucus and slime and they have their own chemical markers to help them find their way back home. Betty gastropods, the group that comprises your slit shells and your top shells. Best bet that it's a Betty gastropod if the shell has a nacreous layer. If you have the opportunity to examine the radula of a Betty gastropod, it's a ripidoglossate radula. 
The abalone. What other interesting thing can we say apart from the fact that you can eat it? Yung pangalan niya, Kali means salty, Otis means ear. Kung titingnan niyo kasi yung shell niya, di ba mukhang tenga? Tapos marine environment. So it's like the ears of the sea. Ang daming butas, ang daming piercings. Neritimorpha, nerites. If you look at the shell, the inner lip of the aperture, the edge is not smooth, it's a bit jagged, kind of looks like they have teeth. Yeah, malilit lang sila. I've seen these guys in intertidal areas. Again, having that small shell might actually help to prevent you from getting swept away by the waves. Xenogastropoda. A lot of the representatives for the lab are under this group. Their shells are never make weights. You can subdivide this further into Neogastropoda and Littorinomorpha. Neogastropods, many of them are predatory, and so they have this structure called the siphonal canal. It's a part of the shell, it's a little bit extended, and that's where the siphon comes out. That's where the osradium is and, and the gills are. Predation, at least in the world of gastropod, relies on chemical signals. Ang kagandahan kasi pag may siphon ka, if you're a predatory gastropod, pag may naspot ka na na chemical signature of your prey, dumo itututok yung siphon mo para pagpasok ng tubig with a chemical signature, am I getting warmer? Bam! I got it. As opposed to just having no siphon and everything just comes in from everywhere, it's hard to sort of home in and detect chemical signatures when it's coming from all places. Ano nga pala yung proboscis? The radula is spear-shaped, so yung proboscis, that's where the radula is, and then pff, they spear the prey, and then na na. Simulan na natin yung rundown of some of these xenogastropods. The taxonomy of xenogastropoda is still under the works. You're going to see a few families that are sorted as unassigned xenogastropoda. Among those representatives in your lab, we have two superfamilies that are still unassigned, Cerithoidea and then Epitanoidea. Let's start with clade Neogastropoda. Very interesting species that we have would be the cone snails. They're highly venomous, so please don't touch them. They're looking into cone snails as a source of new drugs. This is Drupella. They eat coral. If left unchecked in your coral reefs, they can do considerable damage. There are many other species of organisms that eat coral polyps. And right now, more than ever, when preserving reefs is important, we just kind of want to make sure that we manage our reefs effectively. Unfortunately, it has come to that point where humans have to intervene with a lot of the pollutants that we've been excreting into the oceans worldwide. For all we know, they sort of increase their survivability into adulthood because there's more nutrients, they can eat more zooplankton, more phytoplankton, and then when they become adults, they now eat the corals and then fuck, coral we're gone. Let's have a look at, for example, mirror. Ano kaya yung purpose ng napakabang spines? The fact that it's protected by all of these spines just kind of makes it more difficult to access from predators. Moving on into the clade Littorinomorpha, many of them are just grazers, herbivores, Baka magtaka kayo pag nag-google kayo Ficus variegata and it's like, what? It's a plant! Meron ding halaman that has the exact same scientific name. Yun lang. Have a look at representative strombos and lambus. Look at the lips of the aperture, but the part of the shell that borders the opening or the aperture. Ang kapal. If you have a shell that's really a lot more robust, di ang hirap basagin, hard to access, so you have more protection. Ito naman, medyo kakaiba, di ba? Xenophora. Translates to foreign bearer. Ang daming nakakabit na kung ano-anong ibang shell ka. And it does this as a means of protection. Particularly, camouflage. This is not exclusive to Xenophora. You have decorated crabs and you also have Asian moths. This is my kitchen. Xenophora, decorator crabs, Asian moths. What do they have in common? They hoard shit. This is super family Tonoidea. So this is in the ton shells, helmet shells, and you also have the triton shells. Charonia, ma 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 ma, Charonia. This is actually a predatory species. Sabi nga natin, hindi lahat ng predators ni gastropods. And what it eats is a particular type of sea star, the crown of thorns sea star. And why is it important? Because the crown of thorns sea star is actually also a coral eater, much like the drupella that we mentioned earlier. Having a healthy reef ecosystem means you have these gastropods as well. They feed. Shells, shells. Ito rin yung tinatawag natin na sigay. Historically, these guys are used as currency, apart from jewelry and decoration. Hindi mga may I heart burakay. In the Filipino context, we still traditionally see them in the board game called Sungka. We are moving on to clade heterobranchia. Dito na bibilang sina opista branchia in pool monata. Heterobranchia also has this grouping called lower heterobranchia, the members of which are kind of grouped together for molecular or DNA basis. Si Architectonica dati kasama siya under Mesogastropoda, but I guess they realized that okay, part siya ng heterobranchia. Sundial shells, like many other shells, you might see them being sold in your beach shops that sell shells. Pag sinabi natin heterobranchia, these are the main groups that come into mind. So hetero, different branchia gills. Different in the sense that it's positioned either at the posterior or to the side. Paano nangyari yun? Akala ko ba nagkaroon na ng torsion? Kung meron kasing torsion, meron ding detorsion. 
and that's this group. For the representatives in your laboratory, all of them belong under the subclade Euthy nerve. That has something to do with the configuration of the nerves along the body. One consequence of torsion, it's not just the digestive tract that kind of gets twisted, but also the nervous system and the nerves that run down the body. But ito yung group na Euthy neura, which means straight lang ulit. And it's because detorsion. There's the untwisting. Members of nudiplura do not have an external shell. For you, Opisra branchia, they still have a shell, but oftentimes it's either reduced or internalized. For panpulmonata, why na sinabi dyan na panpulmonata, all lungs, it kind of is a misnomer because not all pulmonates are air-breathing. Many of them are terrestrial, but those that still have pulmonates typically serve as freshwater environments. As for their shell, it's still present, but it's kind of thinner, more fragile, it kind of serves a different purpose. Nudibranchia. The gills are either positioned posteriorly or they are located in structures that are called serrata. Some of them also store cysts from the cnidarians that they eat and they kind of put it there so that if there's a predator that tries to eat them bam nematocysts fire and they have the power of cnidarians they have protrusions called rhinophores they have a chemosensory function how the hell do they protect themselves they're soft they're squishy they're so slow that's why they have these very bright colors many of them are toxic as we mentioned earlier with the serrata and the nematocysts they have weapons they kind of use their colors to warn other predators don't fucking eat me or you are gonna fucking regret it the representative that you have would be just this guy at the center which is Philidia. but i decided to add a few more because nudie ranks are so cute because they're awesome and they're very interesting some of the most photographed marine gastropods out there you Opistobranchia, which is all the other opistobranchs except for the nudibranchs. They have a shell, but it's internalized or highly reduced. The representative for your lab would be Acrosida, which is formerly Melaspidia, and then you also have Cephalaspidia. Cephalaspidia, cephala, which means head. Aspidia means shield, so full of field. Tibini ichu yung uli nila is broad or flat. Bakit? They have a burrow in their style, so they kind of use that shield to keep it big. Unlike shell. Panpulmonata, terrestrial snails, and some of the freshwater snails as well. So itong si Hygrophila, siya yung dating base omatophora. Base omato has something to do with the eyes. And then fora, which bury the head tentacles, and then you have the eyes of the fucking base. That's why they're called base omatophora. The members you have there would be your pond snails, Limnea. Super order, you pulmonata, the true air breathers. Style omatophora. Omato, di ba mata? Fora, bearing. So the style part tells you it's like at the tip, which means that the eyes are at the tip of the tentacles. For your lab representatives, you have three families. You have Acatinidae, you have Limacidae, and then you have Helicidae. The last group is under order Cystellomatophora. This used to be order Gymnomorpha. Gymno means naked, morpha means formed. So ito yung talagang slugs na wala nang shell. Ito rin yung mga tinatawag na linta. They're not to be confused with the blood-sucking leeches. Remember that leeches are part of segmented worms, phylum Annelida. This one is a slug and it's part of phylum Mollusca. Dito nagiging useful yung taxonomic classification. Because if you talk to locals and just say, hindi, linta, limatik, ganyan. Pag tinignan mo, what the fuck? Why the fuck would you call this both linta? They're completely fucking different. Now that we've seen all of the gastropod shells, like the diversity of the gastropods, why do pulmonates have relatively thinner shells than their marine counterparts? Because you're thinking, oh yeah, it's for protection, but it's fucking thin. So easy to break, predators can easily get to it. They decide to keep the shell. If not to protect them from predators, then what for? We look at a different angle, and it's more of because of their habitat. You don't get a lot of fucking water on land. The shell this time protects them from water loss. Overall, it still is protection. But in the case of pulmonates where it's thin, then it's protection from water loss. Not so much from predators. You have a thin shell. For predators that have strong beaks, they can just easily crush you. How do you then escape predation? If you can't integrate protection into your form, you can change your behavior. Come out at night. That way, they avoid predators like birds, which are mostly diurnal. And also, at night, it's cooler. They also conserve much more water if they come out at night. Form and function is not the whole end-all and be-all of the story. There's still also behavior and a bunch of other stuff that can help you as an organism survive in your environment. We're not just going to be talking about gastropods this time, but all of the mollusks. They just have many roles to play in our world. Filter feeders like bivalves, a lot of them eat our shit. When they looked at bivalves, there are actually a lot of microplastics in bivalves. Binalitang nagpositibo sa microplastics ang ilang samples ng tahong 
na nakuha mula sa iba't ibang bahagi ng bansa. Kastos kakain ka pa ng tahong, yummy! Plasang plastic. The fact that they're able to clean up the environment, sop up a lot of the shit and gunk that we put out into the world, heavy metals, parasites, they take that in non-discriminately, and now they can be used to help assess the health of ecosystems. Many of them are sources of natural products, particularly for jewelry, like pearls. And then we also mentioned the whole thing about shell collecting in the previous video. Medicine, we mentioned earlier, cone snails with the conotoxins and how it's being applied to be used as painkillers. Not to mention certain species of snails are also part of the life cycle of medically important parasites. Sila yung mga intermediate hosts ng mga flatworms. Food, calamares, baked tahong, escargot, seafood hotpot, clam chowder. Ang dami natin kinakain ng mollusks actually. Very important protein source for many coastal communities. In terms of horticulture and agriculture, some of them are also considered as pests. If they are left unmanaged, they can decimate crops, very valuable plants that you want to put up for sale, mga plantita plantita dyan. If you don't want to use mollusides to kill the snails, you can just let loose a flock of ducks and they will just eat the snails natural pet control if you want to learn more about gastropods and mollusks in general just hit up these videos there are so many things on the world wide web so many resources i left them up here as well just go check them out and learn more about these awesome guys and that ends part three of this three-part series of mollusks oh my god the i'll see you guys next time for echinoderms